Rogier van der Weyden was a pivotal and highly influential figure in the Flemish Northern Renaissance, standing out alongside peers like Van Eyck and Robert Campin. He served as Brussels' official painter, creating artworks for the Duke of Burgundy, who ruled the area then. Van der Weyden's innovative group arrangements and compositions in both portraits and biblical scenes profoundly inspired future generations of artists. His talent for depicting deep emotions distinctly marked his contributions to European art. Van der Weyden, similar to his contemporaries, focused on precise observation and detailed depictions, skillfully blending realistic details with a strong sense of line and design on the surface. Despite the absence of signatures on his works, his unique style, along with detailed technical analysis and historical documents, has allowed experts to attribute a specific collection of art to him, though this collection is subject to debate. Van der Weyden made a significant impact in how emotions were portrayed in art, being the first in Europe to paint figures that are visibly crying. His masterful compositions, placing figures in intimate spaces that seem to reach out to the viewer, amplify the emotional expression, creating a profound effect. Michelangelo, nearly a century later, hinted at van der Weyden's influence, stating that Flemish painting could move viewers to tears in a way that Italian painting could not. His work set a precedent in composition, partly due to workshop practices at the time that involved reusing patterns for different artworks. Van der Weyden is credited with inventing the devotional portrait diptych, a two-panelled work showing a praying individual opposite a religious scene, usually the Virgin and Child. This format was widely adopted by other artists. Moreover, van der Weyden ingeniously merged illusionistic elements with his paintings, blurring the lines between three-dimensional sculptures and the flat yet vivid colours of painting. While Van Eyck used mirrors to suggest the viewer's presence, van der Weyden framed some of his paintings in a way that figures seemed to interact with or extend beyond the frame. This technique was intended to make the viewer feel as though the scene was unfolding within their own space and time, enhancing the immediate experience of the artwork. Roger van der Weyden's celebrated masterpiece, Descent from the Cross, captures the poignant moment when Christ is lowered from the cross by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Set against a compact backdrop, the painting masterfully includes a multitude of figures, among them Mary Cleophas, John the Evangelist, Mary Sabame, the Virgin Mary, and Mary Magdalene. The painting's aim is to provoke a profound emotional reaction from its audience through the grief-stricken expressions and poses of the characters. It draws a poignant parallel between the swooning Virgin Mary and her lifeless son, embodying the modern devotion movement's focus on personal empathy with Christ's passion. The use of a confined space and the intentional ambiguity in spatial and conceptual elements enhance the scene's immediacy and impact. Van der Weyden's technique creates an unsettling effect, notably through the illogical placement of the ladder relative to the cross, suggesting he sought to blend the realism of a life-sized, polychromed altar piece with the vibrancy of a theatrical performance. Descent from the cross significantly influenced the art world, sparking a wave of copies and adaptations. Van der Weyden along with his Northern European contemporaries, introduced a new level of emotional depth and detail to their work, distinct from that of their Italian counterparts. This painting, featuring the central panel of a triptych, sadly lost its two side panels over time. Van der Weyden, renowned for his portrait work, captures the unique individuality of each figure's face 
suggesting that they were modelled after real-life subjects. For instance, St. John's expression is solemn yet composed, reflecting his internal battle to maintain composure. Christ, before his death, bestowed the responsibility of caring for his mother upon St. John the Evangelist. St. John the Evangelist is shown bending down to console Mary, Christ's mother, who is depicted fainting from grief. This gesture is mirrored by Mary Magdalene on the opposite side of the artwork, her posture weighed down by sadness. The Virgin's white headdress symbolizes purity and innocence, a theme that resonates throughout the painting's carefully balanced color scheme. The garment of Mary, Christ's mother, is adorned with ultramarine, a highly valued and expensive pigment derived from the rare mineral lapis lazuli imported from Afghanistan. This choice of color not only enhances the visual appeal, but also historically influenced the artwork's valuation. A skull in the painting symbolizes Adam's presence, alluding to the biblical narrative of his exile from paradise and Christ's sacrifice to atone for humanity's original sin. Van der Weyden strategically uses repetition to amplify the painting's visual effect, notably aligning the Virgin's posture with that of Christ's lifeless body to parallel their shared suffering. Joseph of Arimathea, depicted supporting Christ's body, was a wealthy man who played a pivotal role in Christ's burial, offering his own intended tomb for Christ's interment. The intricate details at the triptych's upper edges might have connected to a frame uniting the panels, showcasing van der Weyden's fascination with deceptive details that challenge the observer's perception. The depiction of Christ combines tragic beauty with the stark contrast of his marbled skin against the linen's whiteness, his wounds and crown of thorns adding a poignant elegance to his figure. The artwork invites comparisons with Grunewald's depiction of the crucifixion. Mary Magdalene, marked by her jar of ointment, is captured in a pose of deep despair, embodying inconsolable sorrow. Van der Weyden masterfully balances the painting's intense emotionality with a meticulous attention to detail, such as Nicodemus's cloak, highlighting his dual capacity for profound empathy and objective observation. Van der Weyden intensifies the viewer's engagement by juxtaposing hyper-realistic details with a compressed, almost surreal arrangement of figures, focusing attention solely on the central subjects. Bright red accents, like those on Mary Magdalene's sleeves, not only symbolize Christ's passion, but also guide the viewer's gaze across the composition. This artwork is one of the only three remaining pieces of what was likely a larger altar piece, portraying the Virgin and Child with saints. This is supported by a later drawing that captures a more complete view of the original altar piece. In the full composition, Mary Magdalene would have been positioned in the lower right corner, next to the seated Virgin and Child. Mary Magdalene is shown with her traditional symbol, a jar of ointment, believed to be used by her to anoint Jesus Christ's feet. She wears a luxurious fur-trimmed overdress and a golden underdress, and is depicted reading from a book, likely a Bible, encased in a protective cloth cover typically used for valuable texts. Her deep engagement in reading reflects her devoutness. The painting also hints at the presence of two other figures, likely Saint John the Evangelist, depicted in red and kneeling before the Christ child, and Saint Joseph, clothed in a blue cloak, standing behind Mary Magdalene. Van der Weyden's painting stands out for its intricate detail, such as the jewels along the hem of Mary's dress, the readable text in her book, 
and the miniature figure set in a landscape seen through a window. Mary's features and hands are rendered in a style that's elegantly simple and slightly abstract, marking Rodier's signature style. However, some aspects of the painting, like the cabinet and the floor, appear less refined, suggesting they might have been completed by assistants in Rogier's workshop. Despite its deteriorated condition, this painting remains one of van der Weyden's most important pieces, likely commissioned by the Brussels Painters Guild, dedicated to their patron Saint Luke. This guild celebrated Saint Luke for his gospel, which detailed the life of Mary, recognizing him as her first portraitist. This artwork is possibly the earliest to show Saint Luke drawing the Virgin and Child. In the scene, Saint Luke kneels in a well-furnished room, using metal point to sketch on a small sheet, with an enclosed garden symbolizing Mary's purity in the background and two figures overlooking a river amidst urban buildings. The painting highlights the humility of Mary and the physical bond between mother and child, with Mary breastfeeding Jesus without any halo or crown seated at the throne's base. The composition closely resembles Van Eyck's Madonna of Chancellor Rolin, suggesting that van der Weyden may have been inspired by Van Eyck's work possibly seeing it in Bruges before its relocation. Both paintings feature elegant interiors, detailed cityscapes, and observers in the background, showcasing van der Weyden's ability to draw inspiration from Van Eyck, while infusing his own unique elements into the composition. The original placement of van der Weyden's painting in the Brussels Painters Guildhouse, or their chapel, in St. Gajul Cathedral, where van der Weyden was later interred, might explain the existence of three close copies in major museums and various adaptations of its figures. The depiction of the cityscape and onlookers was also replicated by an unknown Brussels artist around 1500, underscoring the enduring appeal of van der Weyden's composition. Notably, Albrecht Dürer referred to this piece as a St. Luke panel, during his 1520 visit to Brussels, highlighting its widespread fame and influence. The triptych altarpiece consists of three panels. The left panel shows the nativity scene with Mary and Joseph. The center panel features a pieta, depicting Mary mourning over the dead Christ and the right panel illustrates Christ revealing himself to Mary after his resurrection, with the event also portrayed in the background landscape. This sequence effectively narrates pivotal events in Mary's life. Angels holding banderoles above each scene proclaim the Virgin's crowning for her virtues. The panels are encased in painted round arches adorned with fictive Gothic sculptures that further detail the lives of Jesus and Mary. Similar to his Descent from the Cross, van der Weyden's technique of situating religious figures in defined interior spaces enhances the impression of a staged presentation. Each panel includes a step at the front, extending towards the viewer a method that some art historian believe intensifies the audience's engagement with the divine narrative. The Miraflora's altar piece reflects van der Weyden's stylistic nuances, such as the symbolic colouring of Mary's attire, white for purity, red for compassion and suffering, and blue for faith. The artwork's balance between flatness and depth, alongside the interplay of trompe l'oeil, which means the highly realistic optical illusion of three-dimensional space and objects on a two-dimensional surface, typifies his period's shift towards lighter, more refined figures and a streamlined depiction of their features.
The crucifixion triptych likely started as a single piece, featuring tronc loy frames that created the illusion of three separate sections. These fox frames are still visible around the two side panels. The central panel vividly captures the crucifixion, with Mary and St. John on the left, and the painting's patrons on the right, barely separated from the sacred event by a crack in the ground. This integration of donors with holy figures, almost indistinguishably, is possibly a pioneering approach in European art. The left panel showcases Mary Magdalene holding her signature jar of ointment, while the right panel presents Saint Veronica displaying the cloth that bears the imprint of Christ's face, a relic of her compassion during his ordeal. Above, against a serene blue sky, four mournful angels add to the scene's solemnity. In keeping with early Netherlandish tradition, the backdrop features a landscape reminiscent of Northern Europe rather than Jerusalem's actual landscape where the crucifixion took place according to the Bible. The inclusion of onion-domed towers among typical northern architectural styles introduces an exotic flair, bridging the biblical past with the contemporary viewer's world. This setting enables viewers to connect with the depicted biblical story more personally and empathize with the character's profound sorrow. The artwork focuses on capturing the deep emotional states of its figures. The both Marys are shown in tears, Saint John appears stunned and distraught, and both the Donners and Saint Veronica are depicted in moments of devout reflection and worship. An inscription and coat of arms on the back of this painting confirm the subject as Philip de Croix, a notable figure in the court of Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy. Philip held several titles, such as Lord of Sempe, Lord of Quivrain, and Count of Chime. The monogram in the top left corner of the painting is believed to contain letters from his name or his title Sempe. He is depicted in a pose of prayer, holding a rosary, with a hint of a sword or dagger's round hilt visible at his waist, suggesting the panel was part of a devotional diptych, likely paired with an image of the Virgin and Child. This portrait is a prime example of the sophisticated court portraiture style mastered by van der Weyden. The artist has rendered a true likeness of Philip de Croix while also stylizing his features for a more refined appearance, possibly elongating them and crafting an almost idealized elegance. The sitter's fingers are delicately slim, though not entirely accurate anatomically, as seen with the left thumb's profile. The facial features are rendered with impeccable smoothness and symmetry, and even the hair is meticulously organized in sleek strands that frame his face. Van der Weyden also plays with illusion in this work. The dagger hilt seems to extend beyond the picture plane, hinting at a continuation of the scene beyond the visible frame. Furthermore, the background at first glance, a simple monochrome surface typical of earlier portraiture styles reveals itself upon closer inspection to be a textured fabric backdrop marked by folds. This attention to detail and illusionistic effects underscores van der Weyden's skill in blending realism with artistic refinement. This grand and intensely moving artwork encapsulates many of the themes and techniques Roger van der Weyden favored throughout his career, balancing the depiction of Christ's suffering with the profound sorrow of those who witnessed his crucifixion. Set against a stark background of a blank stone wall and under a dark blue-black sky, the painting features two bright red cloths of honor hanging above the scene. On the left panel, a fainting Virgin Mary is held up by Saint John the Evangelist, both depicted weeping in notably light-colored garments. The right panel portrays Christ on the cross, his suffering mirrored by the tears and blood depicted in the scene. 
The presence of a skull and bones on the ground references Golgotha, or Calvary, the site of Christ's crucifixion, and according to legend, the burial place of Adam. The darkened sky reflects the biblical account of darkness enveloping the land at the moment of Christ's death. Produced in the latter part of van der Weyden's life, the crucifixion diptych is considered to be among his final significant works. The original pairing of these panels, evident from the continuation of Mary's role across both, has sparked considerable scholarly interest and debate. The composition's asymmetry is unusual for Robier's work, leading to speculation that they were not initially intended as a diptych, but rather as part of a larger multi-panel altar piece. Further research suggests these panels might have been the central two shutters of four, designed to cover a complex carved and painted wooden altar piece. This theory accounts for the composition's stark simplicity, typical of exterior covers that often depicted figures in shallow spaces. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.